This is what my game's environment looked like a month ago. And this is what it looks like now. I'm working on an action roguelite called Sundercore. It's like Gungeon meets Fallout meets Escape from Tarkov, I guess. It's still in early development, but if you think it looks cool, subscribe to the channel. I've been focusing a lot on the game's important systems and features. This has left things like the environment and the enemy design feeling a little bit neglected. So I decided this month I was going to update things visually. The game's levels are supposed to take place in different areas of this alien environment. The first level taking place in this kind of no man's land forest outside of the city. This level is going to be the only one in the demo, so it's going to be pretty important that it makes a great first impression. Alright, the plan is to add more variety to the room layouts. Add more foliage and more points of visual interest in each room. It should feel more like a dense forest and less like whatever this is. So I got started on making some background elements, bits of foliage I can use to bulk out the environment to make the room feel a bit less empty, these initial pieces inspired by coral. This being an alien planet, I want the foliage to feel otherworldly. So I'm using coral and fungus as blueprints for different plant types, with the palette comprised of colours that don't naturally occur on Earth that often, so hence the purple and blue. It's important to me that the background of the level isn't too eye-catching, but also isn't too static. Like, it should feel alive. And I've explained in a previous video the wind system I've implemented to give plants a bit more movement, so most of the new foliage is similarly affected by the wind. I then started on designing some foliage for the play space. I plan on making many of the plants harvestable. Maybe they'll give you ingredients or crafting materials for making consumable items. So these types of plants will be spread throughout the rooms and the level. However, something still seemed to be missing. Like I needed something to just add visual noise to the environment, like tall grass. Something to make the environment feel more full. Initial concepts for this, I thought about making the grass really tall, like long wavy strands, but it didn't feel feasible to have that many grass strands rendered for each room. Even with the game's pixel art aesthetic, I still feel like it would be really poorly optimized and significantly impact performance. So I had this idea to instead take inspiration from the old Pokemon games. I thought with Sundercore's very clearly tiled layout, the Pokemon styled tall grass could actually work out nicely and I think it fits pretty well. I'm trying to be careful not to clutter the play space too much. You might have noticed in my art style I use a thick black outline on pretty much everything. This as well as being a choice of style is also for clarity purposes. Things contrast better and important set pieces stick out from the background. I've decided that black outlines will only be used in areas where collision is present, so things like characters, walls and other set objects. Foliage, on the other hand, will not have collision. This is just because of how abundant it is in the level. I think it would negatively impact gameplay and be annoying to navigate. A black outline on foliage also makes it look more important than it is. The foliage should fade into the play space and have low contrast with the ground. So I had this idea instead to replace its black outline with a lighter gradient outline. This way the more important objects and enemies contrast with the environment and clarity isn't lost during combat. These are all test rooms and won't be in the final game or demo. I'm making all these assets for my level editor so I can prototype room layouts quickly, but there's some more work to be done before I finalize any room layouts. I think consistency is important, so I'm going to be making little rules for myself to use in the room design. Things like where types of foliage should spawn, so maybe certain types of mushroom should only appear in areas beside water, stuff like that, and where to use light sources and god rays. That's going to be a process I work on throughout development. The next order of business is figuring out how the player should interact with harvestable plants and foliage in general. So we know there's not going to be any collision with the player, but should there be collision with projectiles? How should the plants be interacted with? I thought about maybe giving the player a melee to let them cut down foliage, but opted against it because I feel like it would definitely have to be worked into the combat, and I really didn't want to do that. I didn't want to add anything new to the combat, I like the gunplay. So I think I'm just going to do an interact prompt that allows the player to harvest items. This makes more sense because there's a lot more potential uses for an interact prompt. I'm also playing around with 
letting projectiles hit foliage, but it doesn't destroy the projectile? Maybe the harvestable plants could break into items when they get destroyed? This creates a problem though. If a load of items spawn in the room during combat, then it could make it more difficult to see where enemies are and if there's an incoming projectile. So I've made it so that any items dropped during combat cannot be picked up and will fade into the background so they don't clutter the play space. And you also can't interact with things in combat. So there won't be a problem with text prompts interrupting gameplay. The next thing I wanted to update were the room exits. They've been very placeholdery till now. The exits should be very readable. This isn't too important for the top exit because of the angle it's at. It's more important for the side and bottom exits. Because of the level theme, I went with a kind of rock cave entrance. There were a few iterations before I was happy, first starting with the top exit design and then doing the side and bottom exits. I thought maybe it would help readability to put a lantern or a stone tile near the exit. The stone tile seemed to be the better option and most people seem to agree. I also realized from this poll I put out, the lantern seemed to give more of a magical fantasy vibe from what people were saying in the comments, which is not at all what I was going for, so I think I'm actually going to steer clear of that. At this point, I decided the side and bottom exits needed a redesign. It was supposed to be like the top part was leaning over the cave, but I actually think this just obscured the exit and made it far less readable than the original placeholder. So I ended up drawing the exits as if they were leaning back, indented into the wall. I think this paired with the stone plate and a dim light source on each exit really makes things stand out better. I thought that maybe it would be a good idea to have the symbol on the stone plate represent different rooms. So whether it's a boss or a special NPC room like a shop or something. For the closing animation of the door, I made it so some pointed wood pieces pop up and block the exit. I thought this suited the forest theme best, but I may still change it at some point or update the animation. Although each level has a main theme, there will be sub-themes for rooms to add more variety. So for the first level, the main theme is this exotic forest, but on top of that I have several areas within that plant. One that has already been shown before is the temples. I've done a slight redesign and added more detail to the area. These temples are what remain of an ancient civilization, long forgotten. The areas are more difficult to navigate with hidden traps scattered throughout the rooms. I'm unsure if I want to bundle all the rooms together for this area type. So for example, that would mean all the temple rooms would spawn clustered beside each other rather than spread randomly throughout the level. I'll have to playtest this with both options and see which is more appealing later in development. The next type of room area is the research camp. These will be spread throughout the first level. As with most things you'll see in this video, this area is still very much a work in progress. The research pods can hold various rare loot. They can either be opened with a keycard or the use of a well-placed bomb. This example here shows a biolab research pod. There will actually be different types of research pods that will spawn. These pods are completely optional, so don't feel like you need to spend a keycard or a bomb to open them. I think stuff like this will make great additions to the looting part of the game. There's going to be containers and other stuff to search when it's fully implemented, kind of like something you'd see in Fallout. The visual design of these pods was actually inspired by these buildings in Avatar. I mean, even the forest design is kind of influenced by the forest on Pandora, but with the glowing foliage. I'm playing around with adding more dynamic elements into the levels. So along with traps, things like this generator. Destroying the generator will cut power to the research pods, meaning you won't be able to use a keycard to open them, you'll have to use a bomb. This gives a separate optional objective to the room, so it's not something you should feel too bad about failing. I could even add different types of obstacles into the room that get deactivated when the generator goes down. This way it might actually be a good idea to destroy the generator if you don't plan on spending a keycard on the pod. I still have several other types of areas planned for this level, but I think that just about does it for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.